Are you sick of having to remove all the bloatware every time you reload Windows 10? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to make a custom ISO without the bloatware. Stay tuned. Microsoft's really not gonna like this video. I did a video a while back on a script that will actually allow you to remove bloatware from Windows 10. It's actually a neat little script that actually helps you to remove a lot of packages that you don't want in Windows 10. However, you have to run this script every time you install Windows 10, which is kind of a hassle. Wouldn't it be nice if you could actually have an original ISO of Windows 10 that didn't come with all the bloatware to begin with? Well, that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're actually going to be building an ISO image that doesn't have all the bloatware. And to do that, we're gonna be using the MSMG toolkit. That's a nice little set of scripts that will allow you to build an ISO file that can either be customized or slim down to whatever your needs are. This is based on the Windows Assessment and Deployment tool, and you don't actually need a degree from Microsoft in order to use it. It's actually a really easy to use script, and I'm gonna go through the steps and show you how to use it. So since this is gonna take a while, let's just jump right into it. So there's gonna be a few things that we're gonna need in order to do this. The first thing that we need is a copy of Windows 10. We're gonna need an ISO to be able to build upon. And to get that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go download the media creation tool from Microsoft. It's really easy to find. Just Google media creation tool and you should be able to find it. When you open it up, it's gonna look just like this. It takes a minute for everything to get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and accept the user agreement here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is we don't wanna upgrade this PC. We wanna actually create installation media. So we're gonna select that and go ahead and hit next. And then here you can actually select what kind of media you want. If you'd like to change whatever the default is here, you can actually uncheck this and then you can kind of select. If you wanna do a different language, um, a different edition, which there is no different edition, it's just Windows 10. Or you can actually change the architecture, so you can go 32 or 64-bit. Um, obviously, I would stay with 64-bit. If you're doing this on the system that you actually plan to use this on, then it would be fine to use the recommended options. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit Next. And then you wanna make sure to pick ISO file. We don't wanna make a USB thumb drive. We definitely want an ISO file. And then once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and hit the next button. And it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. Now, I already have one saved right here because I created this ahead of time. But what you can do is go ahead and give it a name and then push the save button. And at this point, it will actually go through and download the ISO from Microsoft service. This is gonna take a little while to do, and since I've already done it, I'm actually gonna cancel this. But I would just wait it out until it's done, and then once it's finished, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna need is the toolkit itself. So to do that, you're gonna to wanna to go to MSMG Toolkit's website, and I, go, I have a shortcut right here on my desktop. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this in the description below so you can find it yourself. And then what you wanna do is go over to the download link and hit downloads. And then from there, you wanna click download for the MSMG Toolkit itself. And at that point, it should send you to a mirror where you can actually just go ahead and hit accept all cookies and then give it a second for this thing to load. And what you're gonna to wanna to download is this compressed file right here, the Toolkit 7-Zip. Now you're gonna to have to have 7-Zip installed on your computer in order to do this. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of 7-Zip, and I went ahead and extracted this and created a zip file so I could actually open it in Windows. But just keep in mind that you're gonna to have to have 7-Zip in order to open the archive originally. You can always uninstall 7-Zip afterwards if you want to. But once you download this, you'll go ahead and you'll have it on your desktop or wherever you saved it to, and we can move on to the next step. And what that's gonna be is we're gonna to wanna to extract what we actually downloaded. So we're gonna to wanna to take the toolkit itself, drag it off onto our desktop here. And it's gonna take a minute for it to extract. And once it's finished, we can go ahead and close the archive and then we can open up the toolkit folder right here. Now in the toolkit folder, what we need to do is we need to actually place the ISO that we just downloaded into the ISO folder. So we're gonna open the ISO folder here and we're gonna take that ISO that we just downloaded and go ahead and drag it into this folder. And once we drag it in there, that's all we need to do from there. We wanna go back to the beginning of the folder here and then we wanna click the start script. So we're gonna do that right now. Go ahead and hit yes to your account prompt. And then from this point, you wanna hit A for accept. 
And it's gonna take a minute, hit any key to continue. And then once you're to this point, you're actually at the main menu for this script. And we're gonna go through each step that I'm gonna to take to actually create a custom ISO. Now, you don't have to follow my settings exactly. You can actually go around and experiment in this and come up with your own custom ISO. This isn't about what I'm doing, this is about what you wanna do. So some of the things that I'm gonna to choose to remove may not be the same things that you wanna remove, but that's what makes this kit so great because you can choose for yourself what you want and don't want. So let's get back to it. All right, so from here, the first thing we wanna do is click one for source. And then for source, we have an ISO image. So we need to extract that ISO image. So to do that, we're gonna to wanna to hit right here, number three, extract source from DVD ISO image. So go ahead and hit three. And then it's gonna ask you the name of the ISO. And this is the name that you would have given the ISO previously. Mine was Windows, but yours may be named whatever you wanted to name it when you saved it from the media creation tool. So I'm gonna type in Windows here. Now you don't wanna use the ISO file name because it automatically puts that on. Just put the name of the file without ISO after it, then hit enter and it's gonna go through and it's gonna extract everything from the ISO into the DVD folder in this toolkit. And I'll show you that once it's done. It may take a minute to get through this section, but once it does, go ahead and just click any key to continue and you'll be back at the main menu. Now, just to show you real quick what we just did, I'm gonna go back to the folder here and if you look, we have a folder here called DVD. If you open this folder, this is actually the contents of the ISO that you just extracted. So just to kind of give you an idea of what the script is doing is essentially all it did was pull the files from the ISO into this folder. And we're gonna go ahead and go back to the tool now. And then we wanna go back into the sources menu again. And then for this, what we wanna do is we wanna extract source from custom Windows ESD image. Your Windows ISO probably uses an ESD image. This is just a more compressed image to kind of take up less space on the thumb drive or CD-ROM that you're using to actually burn the install too. Now what this program actually needs is it needs a WIM image. And in order to do that, we're gonna actually have to use a script in this tool in order to convert it to a WIM. It's gonna make it a little bit bigger, but it's gonna make it so the tool can actually use it. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna push on right here, number seven, extract source from custom Windows ESD image. So hit seven, and it's gonna go through and it's gonna find the additions of Windows that are actually on this ISO image. Now, obviously this one has a copy of each edition of Windows. Now, what I would do is you can pick all if you want. However, I would just select the one that you're actually gonna use. It'll make this toolkit a little bit quicker. If you choose all of them, then it actually has to go through and repeat the steps for every single version of Windows, and it takes it a really long time to get through. So I'm actually gonna select number six for Windows 10 Pro. So once I hit number six, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, and it's gonna go through and extract just Windows Pro from the ISO image. One thing you can't forget while you're doing this is you're unfortunately gonna need a lot of patience because in between each step here, you're gonna have to wait for the, the script to actually do what it is that you're asking it to do, and a few of those actually take a little bit of time, but it's okay because it's gonna be a great payoff in the end. All right, so once it's completed, you can go ahead and press any key to continue, and you're gonna go back to the main menu. Now, we need to go into the sources menu one more time here, so go ahead and click one again to go into sources, and now that we have the ESD extracted, we actually need to select source from the DVD folder. So go ahead and hit one, and it's gonna ask you which image you want. Now, obviously, we only extracted Pro, so Pro is the one we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and hit one, enter, and it's gonna ask you if you want to mount the Windows boot image, I'm gonna say yes, and the recovery image, I'm gonna say yes as well. So once it finishes mounting that image, we can start removing some of that bloatware. Let's get back to it. All right, now that it has the image mounted, we can start removing bloatware. So go ahead and hit enter to go to the main menu, and from here, we're gonna to wanna to go into the remove menu. So go ahead and hit number three for the remove menu, and then we wanna click on remove Windows components, the very first one. 
And then we want to select Windows components to be removed. So go ahead and hit number one again. And this is going to give you different categories of components that you want to remove. So let's just start at the very top. We'll go into Internet. And these are the components that are currently going to be installed. So we got Adobe Flash for Windows, Edge Chromium Browser, and Internet Explorer. Now what I typically do on these is rather than choosing which ones I don't want to install, I click all in order to eliminate everything. And then I go back and I choose what I actually do want to install. So for that, we're going to go ahead and hit A, and that's going to actually put a minus in front of all these. That means they're going to be removed from the image. However, I want to keep Internet Explorer because, you know, we need something that we can use to install Chrome, right? <laughs> so in order to install Internet Explorer, we're going to go ahead and hit 3, and that'll put a plus next to Internet Explorer. And then go ahead and hit X to go back. And then from here, we're going to go into the next menu, Multimedia. So in Multimedia, it has a whole bunch of things that it wants to install just like before, I'm going to go ahead and hit A to remove all of it. And then for some of these things, like for instance, the first login animation isn't necessary. You can remove, you can not install that if you want. However, it makes it really boring while you're waiting for Windows to set up for the very first time. So I go ahead and leave that one on. Then we got Game Explorer. This is for Microsoft games. If you don't plan on using any Microsoft games, then it's really not necessary. But if you do, go ahead and hit 2 to install it. And then these are different tools, multimedia tools for Windows. You've got like the snipping tool, speech, rec speech recognition, and things of that nature. The media player, photo viewer, and the Windows system assessment tool. Now on these ones right here, I would highly recommend installing media player. And it's because some games actually require media player in order to play. So go ahead and hit five to install media player. And you know what? I'm gonna leave the rest out. So we're gonna go ahead and hit X to, to go back to the previous menu. And then now we're gonna go ahead and click privacy. So go ahead and hit three for privacy. On this one, you actually have to push one in order to remove all privacy components. So go ahead and hit one and it's gonna uncheck everything. And then I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna decide which ones of these I actually want to install. So we've got assigned access, customer experience improvement program. Yeah, not none of this is interesting to me at all. Kernel debugging, location services picture, password, pin sign-in, nope, none of the. So you know what, I'm gonna leave all of this stuff out completely. So we're gonna go ahead and go back. And then in remoting, we're gonna go ahead and hit four to go into that menu. And then we got home group, which is an absolutely worthless Windows networking tool. We got multi-point connector and then remote assistance. And you know, I'm gonna remove all of these and then we're gonna hit X to go back. And then from system, go ahead and go ahead and hit five to go into system. And then from here, we have, just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and hit all system components, gonna go ahead and hit one, it's gonna uncheck everything. And then I'm gonna go through here and decide which ones of these I actually want to keep. So device lockdown, no, ease of access, no, easy transfer, file history, you know what, that one I'm actually gonna keep because file history is necessary for Windows backup. And you know what, you should always have a backup. Trust me, you don't want to not have a backup. It's very important, very important. So go ahead and leave that one checked. Then the next one, we're going to go through here. And you know, I use paint to take screenshots all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and keep paint. Security Center. I actually like Microsoft Security Center. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that one on. And that actually depends on Windows Defender. So there's some dependencies in here. So if you actually uninstall one, then the other thing won't work. Like for instance, if you go into System Restore right here, it depends on Windows Backup. Well, as you can see, Windows Backup is unchecked here. But if we actually check System Restore, I'm gonna go ahead and hit I, you'll see it automatically checks Windows Backup. So it actually does do some dependency work. So it makes it a little bit easier so you don't accidentally install one thing and not a dependent that it actually needs. Needs. And then Windows Firewall, yes, I'm going to keep that. Windows Subsystem for Linux, I am actually going to keep that. Windows to go, nope. And WordPad, yeah, why not? Let's keep WordPad. Okay, from there, we're going to hit X and go back. And then we're going to go into System Apps, which is kind of a redundant name. We were in System before, now we're in System Apps. So we're going to go into System Apps. And as you can see, well, we're cut off now. Well, here's the thing, right? Is there's actually a whole list of other components above here. And what you're gonna wanna do is just kinda drag this window down and just resize it a little bit so you can see everything that's on the screen. And there you go. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit A for all system apps. Now on this one, it doesn't automatically go. You actually have to hit enter for this menu here just to make it work because a lot of the selections right here actually have a two digit selection. So you have to use your enter key on this one. 
So we're gonna go ahead and hit that and it's gonna uncheck everything. Then we're gonna kind of go through and see what we want, like accounts control for Windows Store. No, I have no intention on installing Windows Store. Don't need it. Assigned access, async tech service, Azure, nope. Windows help, nope. Calling shell, nope. Capture picker, nope. Camera, no. So we're gonna go through here. Eventually we might find something we actually want to install. The Edge Classic browser, nope. I control app, File Explorer. This was one that we definitely want. So we're gonna go ahead and hit 14 for File Explorer. And then lock screen app, um, narrator, OneDrive. Absolutely not, we don't want OneDrive. Um, parental controls, uh, maybe if you're into that. People bar, absolutely not. Quick assistant app. And you know, a lot of these things, it doesn't look like I'm actually gonna be using. So I'm actually just going through here real quick just to see. And the Windows Defender app. So this is one that I definitely want because I'm actually a fan of Windows Defender. So we're gonna turn that on. Windows Mixed Reality, no, no. And I'm gonna leave all the Xbox stuff out and it looks like that's it. We've got two things, Windows Defender and the File Explorer app. So we're gonna hit X to go back and then hit enter. And then the last menu is Windows apps. So we're gonna go into there and this is gonna be another big menu that has a lot of apps in it. But like before, we're gonna hit A for all, unchecks everything. And then we're gonna go through and see what we want. Like, okay, alarm clock, you know what? I'll use the alarm clock. And calculator, I will definitely use the calculator. Camera, no, Quintana, desktop app installer. You know, I'm gonna actually go ahead and install this one right here. We're gonna hit seven and then feedback hub, feedback hub, Google's VP9 Kodak. This is actually an important one. Make sure you check this one right here. And I would recommend actually doing all of the different codecs. High efficiency image file, definitely gonna to wanna to check that. And like I said, go through all of the different codecs and, and select all of those. We want maps, play, fix, and you know, a lot of these we're not gonna use. So OneNote, Paint 3D, Note, People, Photos. I actually don't like the Windows 10 photos. I like to change it to the old Windows 7 style photos. So I'm definitely not gonna use that. Um, screen Scratch, Skype, Nope. Um, sticky Notes, you know, you Sticky Notes can come in handy. However, Sticky Notes requires the Microsoft Store. So we're definitely gonna skip that. And then Voice Recorder, Nope, Tips, Weather, and here's another one, Web Media Codec and the WebP Image Codec. We're gonna definitely want both of these. So we're gonna go 31 and 32. Windows Mail, no. Windows Store, absolutely not. And then the Xbox and your phone and that's it. So we're gonna go ahead into X now and go back to the main menu. So now that we went through all of these different subcategories, we've told the script which components we want and which components we don't. And now it's time to go through and let the script remove all of the components that we've chosen to remove. And to do that, let me show you how. Okay, so what you wanna do is in order to actually allow the script to remove all of the components that you've chosen, go ahead and hit the X button for back. And then you wanna click right here where it says start removing Windows components. Go ahead and push two and it's gonna go through and it's going to remove components based on the selections you made in the previous step. Now. This is gonna take a little while to do. So go ahead and sit tight, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and watch your computer work. Some systems can take a lot longer. This is all gonna depend on the speed of your computer. If you have a faster computer, obviously it's gonna go a little quicker. If you have a slower computer, this might take you quite some time. So go ahead and sit tight and wait for this thing to finish. And once it's done, I'll meet you back in Windows. All right, now that it's done removing components, go ahead and push any key to continue. And now we can hit X to go back and go ahead and hit X one more time to go back again. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is that this script actually allows you to integrate components into your Windows install as well. And I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna install DirectX 9 and the Visual C runtimes because honestly, those are usually helpful when it comes to gaming. So we're gonna go ahead and integrate those just so I can show you the integrate menu. So we're gonna go ahead and go into two. And then in this, you can integrate all different kinds of things. You can, you can integrate language packs, you can integrate drivers, features, updates, or you can do custom features as well. And where you get all this stuff at is you actually, we're gonna go back to the website, and if you look right here, the MSMG toolkit packs, this is where you actually get all of these packs in order to do the integration in the first place. So what you would do is you go ahead and click on browse right here, it's gonna open up the mirror, and then from here you would just choose what you wanna integrate, 
and then place that into the toolkits directory. Like for instance, we're gonna use DirectX 9, and I've already downloaded that, but here's where you would get the files themselves at. So now that we already have it all downloaded, let me show you how to actually integrate them into the toolkit. The way you would do that is go into the original folder again where we actually save the toolkit to, and we wanna go into packs. And then from packs, these are all the different folders that the different packs go in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on DirectX 9, I'm gonna move it out of the way here, and I'm gonna take this folder and just drop it into here. And it's gonna go ahead and copy it. Once it's done, we can close this and open the next one. And then from here, same thing. We're just gonna grab the folder and drop it in, and it's gonna take a minute to copy, and there we go. Once that's finished, we can go ahead and go back to our script, and we're gonna to wanna to choose Windows Features. And from there, go ahead and hit three. And then obviously, we chose DirectX 9 and Visual C++. So for that, we're gonna hit N, and it's gonna go through, and right now, it's installing the DirectX 9. Once it's finished, you push any key to continue, and then choose the next one. That's gonna be Q. And there we go, any key to continue. Now, if you did anything wrong, like for instance, let's try to install something that I didn't download. Let's take, um, let's do like the Windows Media Feature Pack. So if we hit G right now, you'll see that it's not found. They can't, the feature pack is missing from the below folder. So if you wanted to do that, you would actually have to go back to the website that I showed you before, download that feature pack and copy it into the folder here if you wanted to actually integrate that into your Windows install. But for now, we're gonna be done. So we're gonna go ahead and hit back and then hit X to go back again. Now that we have our ISO for the most part created, we actually have to tell the script to actually make the install now. And to do that, let me show you how. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit five to apply all the changes that we have just made. So we're gonna go ahead and hit five. And then it's gonna give you all these different selections. The one we want is number two, apply and save changes to the source image. So we're gonna go ahead and hit number two. And then it's gonna ask you if you wanna clean up the image folder. For this, I would hit no, because if you wanna go back and you wanna add something later that you've actually removed, it'll still be there to add it if you want to. So go ahead and hit no. So as I said before, this script takes a lot of time. There's a lot of waiting involved. So unfortunately, you're gonna to have to find something to do to pass the time while this is going on because especially this section right here happens to take the longest of any of the other sections that we have to do. And this is because it's actually building the WIM file that will later be used to create the ISO. So if you need something else to do, hopefully you have your phone handy and you can, I don't know, watch some of my other videos. And in the meantime, wait until this finishes up. All right, now that this is finished up, and yes, that did actually take a really long time. So we're gonna go ahead and hit any key to continue, and we're right on the home stretch now. So now that we have our image put together, now we need to actually make an ISO file. So the last tool that we're gonna use is target right here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit six for target. And then from here, it gives you a bunch of different options. You can actually create a USB flash drive straight from this menu. However, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do mine in a different way. What I want is I wanna make a DVD ISO image. But you can actually go through and kind of experiment with some of these other selections if you want to. But for right now, we're gonna make a DVD ISO image. Go ahead and hit one. And then it's gonna ask you what you want the volume label for the ISO to be. So I'm gonna name mine Cyber CPU and then hit enter, and then what is your ISO file's name? I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna do cyber CPU. And then from there, it's actually gonna go ahead and create the ISO. Now this actually doesn't take very long. It flies through this section fairly quickly. So once it finishes, I'll actually show you how to burn this ISO to a thumb drive so you can actually install it on your computer. Okay, now that we've actually built the ISO, now we need to do something with it, and you know, most new computers don't have a CD-ROM anymore, so we don't actually want to make a CD out of this ISO. What we want to do is we want to actually put it onto a USB thumb drive so we can actually install it on our system. And for that, we're actually going to use a tool called Rufus. This is a tool that I use to create images all the time, and it works really well. So let me show you how to use it. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna go back to the toolkit folder here and go back into the ISO folder. And you'll notice here, you have two ISOs in here now. You have the original ISO that you created 
from the media creation tool and you also have the ISO that you just created with this toolkit. Now this is the ISO we're concerned with now. This is gonna be our new de-bloated version of Windows. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. I'm gonna drag it out onto the desktop and go ahead and close this folder for the toolkit. We're gonna go ahead and run Rufus here. And Rufus is a really easy to use program that you can download for free. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description on where you can actually download this. And from here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna select our USB drive, and that's gonna be this drive right here. And then we wanna push the select button to select the ISO that we wanna actually write to it. So from there, we're gonna open this up, go to our desktop, and from there, select the ISO that we just copied and then hit open. And then once you have that open, you can go ahead and just push start and it will actually start writing the ISO to the USB drive. But luckily, I've already done that. And if you look around, this copy of Windows that we've actually been doing on, this on the whole time is actually the copy that I already made using this method. And as you can see, there's hardly anything on here from before. Windows is really stripped down, all the bloatware is gone, and it's running really well. So now that we have an ISO created, you can actually use this ISO to install Windows on as many computers as you want, at least as many computers as you have licenses to run Windows on. You still have to have a license for Windows in order to use this, but at least now you have a pre debloated copy of Windows at your disposal whenever you want to use it. Now, I would recommend rather than using the in-place upgrade in Windows 10 to upgrade to the newer versions of Windows as they come out, I would recommend repeating these steps each time a new build of Windows comes out. So that way you'll have a fresh copy of a debloated version of the latest build of Windows. But if this was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.